In this session, we're going to take a look at restoring files that have been manually deleted from the working copy. In previous sessions, we looked at restoring files that had been deleted using the subversion delete command. However, there will come a time when somebody accidentally or deliberately deletes a file from their working copy without using the subversion interface. If you've not already done so, change your current directory so that you're sitting in the root of the MO3L10 working copy as provided in the course pack. In order to show the restoration of manually deleted files, we're going to need a file to delete. Looking at a directory listing of our working copy, you'll note that there is a file called deleteme.txt. This is a version controlled file within the working copy. Now we'll use the standard operating system delete command to manually delete the deleteme.txt file. You'll notice that we've not used the subversion clients and therefore the file will be seen as missing. A directory listing confirms the fact that the deleteme.txt file is now no longer in our working copy. The status command confirms that the subversion client considers the deleteme.txt file to be missing as shown by the exclamation mark in the first column of its output. A missing file is one which the subversion client expects to be in our working copy but for some reason is not there. We can use the revert command to restore this file. To do this, we issue the revert command in exactly the same way as we did when we reverted the file that we deleted through the subversion client. We simply specify svn revert and the name of the file to be restored. The revert command confirms that the deleteme.txt has been reverted. Showing the status of the working copy now shows that the file is no longer missing and a directory listing confirms that the deleteme.txt file has been restored to our working copy. The one important observation to be made about manually deleted files is this. If you manually delete a file that you have made modifications to, when you restore the file with the svn revert command, the file is restored to its base version, not to your modified version. Subversion does not keep track of modified files unless they've been committed back into the repository. So the revert command can save you from manually deleting a file, but it can't save you from manually deleting modifications to a file. In order to show the restoration of a manually deleted directory, we need a directory to delete. So looking at our directory listing of our working copy, we see that there is a copy dir directory. This is a version controlled directory as confirmed by looking at the working copy sample over on the right. Using the operating system remove directory command will recursively remove copy dir and its contents. Bear in mind we've manually deleted copy dir without using the subversion client. This means that we physically removed the copy dir and all of its contents including those all important .svn metadata directories. Doing a directory listing on our current working directory now shows that the copy dir is completely removed. Using subversion status to report the subversion client's view of our working copy shows that copy dir is seen as missing. You'll notice that the contents of copy dir are not reported in any way whatsoever. That's because the status command will work recursively. And since copy dir is missing, by definition, all of its contents is also missing, although it can't be reported because the subversion client has nothing to use for the report. A natural inclination to restore the copy DII is to use the revert command, just as we did for files. However, attempting to revert a directory which has been manually deleted results in an error. Specifically, the revert command reports that it's failed to revert copy DIR and that we should try updating instead. The reasons why the revert command has failed are as follows. As explained previously, the revert command works locally using data held within the working copy. However, to restore a directory and its contents, the .svn directory is required, and that was deleted along with the copy DIR when we manually removed the directory from the working copy. Since the revert command has got no information to work with, it can't possibly revert the missing directory. This is different to the situation when we were reverting a file that had been manually removed. When the file was manually removed, its base version was still held in the corresponding .svn metadata directory in the directory from which the file had been deleted. 
So the revert command simply referred to this metadata version and restored the file to the working copy. In this case, the copy DIR doesn't exist, the .svn that it contains does not exist, so revert's got nothing to work with. The recommendation from the revert command is to try updating instead, and this is the correct strategy to restore manually deleted directories. The update command, unlike the revert command, does refer to the repository. So if you've deleted a directory manually and you're disconnected from your repository, you'll be unable to restore the directory. Using the update command, we specify explicitly the copy directory is to be updated. The update command restores the files by re-adding the directory and its contents from the repository. And repeating the status command confirms that the copy DIR is no longer considered to be missing by the subversion client. There is a very important but subtle distinction between the update and the revert. Recall that when we do a revert, the information is restored from base versions held within the .svn metadata, and these base versions are synchronized based on the last time we updated our working copy. So suppose we had a working copy that was last updated at version 10. The contents of the directory, and therefore the restored files, would never be greater than revision 10, because that's the revision we updated to. If someone then manually deleted that directory and we were called upon to restore it, the revert command would not work because all of the base information would have been removed along with the directory. However, using the update command, the system can refer back to the repository. If the head of the directory has moved on as a consequence of people committing things into the repository, the update command will, by default, restore the head to our working copy. Suppose the head revision had moved on to revision 20. When we do the SVN update, we will recover version 20 of the repository. So the directory that we are restoring will be restored up to revision 20 and may therefore contain more up-to-date versions of the files and directories that have been held in the repository. In order to maintain the integrity of our working copy as it was before we manually deleted the directory, we would have to know that our working copy was updated to revision 10. We will then have to repeat the update command of the directory to be restored using an explicit revision, in this case revision 10, in order to ensure that the update command restored revision 10 of the directory into our working copy. Generally speaking, this is not a major issue. However, it is something that you ought to bear in mind when you're using update to restore directories. If you're happy to take the update from the head of the repository, then using a simple SVN update will suffice. If, however, you want to restore your working copy to a specific state, you'll need to ensure you specify a revision when doing the update.